Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at some big news, which I haven't seen covered out there, and I think it's going to play a big important role to leading us into the next stage of the bull cycle. After all of the accumulation takes place, if you're getting yourself familiar with the Wyckoff accumulation zones and distribution zones, I think this sort of news and fundamental analysis is going to play part into pushing the market up again, sucking retail investors into this next stage of the market. Because we understand that retail are the ones that get on late because the big money, the whales, use this time in the market, the scary times, to be accumulating. So they need another strategy to keep pushing us out. And all of these pieces come together. So I'm going to get that, get into that at the beginning of this video as well. So make sure you've already hit that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily Q&As and crypto updates over on Twitter. So with that said, let's dive in. Let's start with the coin market caps, crypto market caps. We're at 1.64 trillion. Remember our 50% zone, our 50% support level is at 1.33. So we're still above that level at the moment. Over the last 24 hours, most of the top 20 has taken a hit somewhere between a few percent to around 7%, of course. So uh, the bigger losses come on the back of Theta, Polygon, ICP, so Internet Computer, and Polkadot. Polygon is an interesting one because that obviously had bigger gains early on and now it's having the bigger losses. So remember that moving forward. When things start to rebound sooner than others, generally, not always, they'll... Uh, tend to have bigger corrections. Just like Matic had a massive correction compared to everything else. Yes, there were some others that did hit a 70%, but Matic had a quite a big correction from that top into the middle part of May, bounced back a lot, and now we're seeing some more falls on uh, Matic at this point. Solana is, is doing quite well overall. It's up 36% on the week, just a few percent off today, so still around $40. But as I said, Polygonmatic down 18%, so the highest out of any of the top 20 cryptocurrencies. So it's having a bit of a hard time after a really strong recovery. Next up, let's take a look at the Fear and Greed Index. So we're currently at 17. We've seen a slight rise into the mid-20s, getting us out of extreme fear into fear, but slipped back into the extreme fear at the moment. I suspect we'll get some higher lows over the next couple couple of weeks. And uh, I just see that as... I see that happening because we are starting to run out of all of the bad news and people are starting to figure out it's not so bad. Even if we do get some big bad news come along to spike us down, I think that part of the market has is starting to wear thin. Should we get a little dip down, uh, I think that's a good buying opportunity. But we'll look at those on the charts in future videos coming up this week. One by one, we've got to check those out. But for now, uh, fear and greed's at 17. So not all that bad, even though we saw Elon Musk tweet again uh, over the last 24 hours or so and uh, breaking up with Bitcoin. Looking at Google Trends, uh, we can see that people aren't searching for Bitcoin as much anymore and they're not searching for crypto as much anymore. These peaks, the red is Bitcoin, you can see, blue is crypto. Uh, January was a major top and then also February was a major top. Then retail comes in through this point. There was some retail here. Everyone's sort of searching it, trying to figure out what they want to do. This is my theory, of course. And then uh, retail comes in and we start to see crypto increase because they're looking for altcoins, looking to get onto the next best thing, uh, trying to chase gains and get screwed, start gambling on everything. And then, of course, we see this huge spike as Bitcoin dumps. Everyone's searching Bitcoin, searching crypto, probably trying to figure out what's going on. Why is it falling? They don't really understand what the hell's going on. So retail comes in late, tries to gamble, markets crash. This is Wyckoff uh, accumulation distribution. Whales coming in, buying stuff when no one's looking at crypto or Bitcoin, selling it at the top as the interest rises, and then repeating the cycle. And if you don't believe me, check out this tweet here. Nebraska Guna, check out the date, 20th of April. Remember on the channel, on the 18th of April, we also looked at... Uh, a three-day down rule, a break from the high, three days down. That's a very strong indication of first sign of weakness to crash the market. It doesn't always have to play out. It's not a 100% rule, but it's a very strong one. That's a GAN rule. It's not Wyckoff, but GAN, uh, William GAN, if you're interested. Then we saw 11 straight days down. Then uh, then a, uh, we got a bounce 
after those days there. 11 days down is massive. And we were talking about that on the channel as well. Now, like I said, if you don't believe me, check this out. If this plays out, we could go uh, sweeping below $40,000. That seems like normal to us now. But this was the time when Bitcoin was still at $56,000. And we had just come off just in a few days earlier, our all-time high of 65000 People don't believe this. Just go down and check out these. I'm sure you guys are just sort of staring at this one, but stay with me. Check out the quote, the comment here. Not going to happen. Stop the FUD. Uh, patterns are used against little fish by big players. Stop the FUD. You guys, if you've been following at least since sort of February, you know that's exactly what people write in the comments when I was looking at Cardano. On these videos, we are checking out here. This is the first time I'm thinking, all right, ADA's getting a little bit hot. I think it's time to sell, at least sell some, maybe take some gains. We don't have to sell out, you know, maybe just hold it on the ride that you've got different plans, different plans for different people. But what I'm talking about here is following the market to understand peaks and troughs. People hated that. Uh, this one here is looking at the potential price points of Cardano, two bucks, two fifty, three dollars Then the next day I'm like, all right, I think it tops it. Time to sell some Cardano, all right? And that one ticked a lot of people off. But that was the February top and we didn't hit that top again for two and a half months. Next up, we have the ADA video. And so I was looking at the major top at this point. And within this, there were a couple of other videos to say, all right, we've got a chance to get the breakout and people love that. You know, they understood that, they got on board. So we had a couple of breakouts. We got those really well. Then I'm like, all right, probably the top is in at the moment for now. You know, not the all time high, but currently it is the all time high, but I think it's going to go further. The point being is at the time, it does not seem like this is ever going to happen. People were right here. Below 50K is a lower low on the weekly. That's a bear market. Lol, like it's never going to happen. Um, <laughs> lol, not going to happen. Stop the FUD. This happens time and time again. Hopefully, next time around, we won't get suckered in, which leads me over to the news. As I said, I would look at, come back to these Wyckoff theories, is this here. Google just announced new terms for crypto businesses. This is what they must do starting next month. Google, they run everything. Everything that we see is from Google. We look at Google Trends to see what people are searching for. So with this, they are changing some of the rules. Online tech giant Google is lifting a nearly three-year-old ban on ad advertisements for crypto-related products. Of course, these are just theories of mine, all right? This doesn't mean it has to happen, but I think this will be some really big news. From what I remember from 2017, if you were around in 2017, let me know in the comments down below what you remember seeing on Facebook. Facebook banned cryptocurrency ICOs and cryptocurrencies to be advertising on Facebook. And that started to slow the market down a lot because retail wasn't seeing the advertisements anymore. Now we have online tech giant Google. I, I shouldn't have to explain how massive that is if they are lifting a three-year-old ban which you count back that's around 2018 ICOs were still going crazy and they, they put a ban on it back then in 2018 uh, on advertisements for crypto related products Google's updated its support page announcing a new policy on how will it will handle advertising for cryptocurrency <coughs> exchanges and wallets in the United States beginning August 3 keep that date in mind remember we have been looking at a fairly long time underneath these all-time highs comparatively speaking, in this bull market. I've talked about 57, 61 weeks up, which we've already seen, and then half of that period around 28 or so weeks beneath that all-time high. That's just a rough road map guide for us. August 3 will come out at about four months from, uh, from that top in April. Remember that, okay? So advertisers offering cryptocurrency exchanges and wallets targeting the United States may advertise those products and services when they meet the following requirements and are certified by Google. With the application opening in July, so that's what they have to do. Come July, they'll be able to get their applications together. They get certified if they comply with Google's legal requirements and are registered with FinCEN. Uh, as a money service business and with at least one state as a money transmitter, a federal state chartered bank entity. Okay. So really what I'm taking from this is they get to advertise now on Google again. It's not saying that they haven't been able to advertise already, but from what I understand, from what I've seen as well, the main way that a lot of these cryptocurrencies are advertising is through uh, social media. So guys like myself or other social media influencers, they're able to come onto channels like this. They're also able to get um, articles written up like they do on, say, 
these sorts of things. You know, they get to write, um, go to these companies and pay to have articles put onto these platforms. So these are these are big business for these websites. So they grow their platform, get more eyes on each of the of the views or each of the articles, and then they can pay from there. Also note, all prior cryptocurrency exchange certifications will be revoked on August 3. Advertisers must request new cryptocurrency exchanges and wallet certifications with Google when the application form is published on July 8th. So just taking away those uh, certifications, then you've got the opportunity to reapply for them because there's going to be new rules. So that's for the exchanges as well. All prior cryptocurrency. So exchanges have been able to advertise, but they just have to go through this process as well. Now, maybe I'm making too much of a big thing about this. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. I do read all of those comments, uh, although I can't get back to everyone. I do read all of those comments. So I have a feeling that this will play a big part, especially for retail coming in. Remember our Wyckoff distribution, retails in, whales sell out, price plunges. Then we have the accumulation phase. We're potentially in this now. We won't know until after the fact. It doesn't have to play out exactly like these schematics, these lines are showing us. But these are the the points here. You know, we have our different phases of the accumulation. And so this can all play out now. As we've seen, people are less inclined to be in the market right now. They're scared. They want to know what's going on. Then they start to see ads on Google, on Facebook. And that gets them a little more excited, feel a little more comfortable, and they can start following the sheep into slaughter. And we repeat the cycle yet again. So let me know in the comments down below, do you think I'm putting way too much emphasis on this Google News? Or is it going to just play a piece of the puzzle to the overall game as we lead into uh, lead out of an accumulation zone into another distribution zone uh, through this bull market cycle. On the back of that distribution, accumulation, prices going up and down, the belief in the market that things will always stay the same and continue going up, there's so much more left in the market, all that sort of jargon. I hope you remember back. And if you're just new into the market, no worries. Go and check out what was going on with NFTs through January, February, March, April. Uh, NFTs were the biggest thing ever. Right, it was just it was taking over the world, and that was crypto for you. It was just NFTs, NFT bubble bursts as market crashes by ninety percent. So we're really just looking at week on week data here. NFT markets crashed by ninety percent from one hundred and two million in sales to nineteen million in sales. NFTs linked to crypto arts were outsold by NFTs linked to metaverses like digital real estate and artifacts in the last week. So at the time, NFTs biggest thing ever. They're going to keep growing. How can it not keep growing? This space is the biggest, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you guys have even just been in the space for four months now, you would have seen this play out at least twice now. We've seen it with altcoins. We've seen it with NFTs, which of course are altcoins, but you can see it in two different mindsets. This market has to do it. So does this market. Boom and bust. So just keep that in the back of your mind and add that to your investor experience. Now let's update some cryptocurrency news. First, we have Bitcoin and Kraken CEO still believes Bitcoin is going to be worth 200 grand by the end of the year. Personally, I will never put my investment plan on the back of what someone is saying here. And I don't suspect he's saying to do that either. But I know a lot of people will and they will just say, this guy should know what he's talking about. He runs an exchange. 200 grand Bitcoin by the end of the year. Fantastic. I doubt it. Not that it can't happen, but it's very, I think it's very unlikely at this point, especially with how far we have to climb into, you know, first getting past 45K, then our all-time high of 65K, and then psychological levels of 100K, 120, 150, et cetera. So I think there's still a lot of a lot of room to grow and I'm not getting over excited for 200K. So, and then he goes on to say, you know, treat BTC as a five to 10 year plan. So look, take that with a grain of salt. Miami mayor, looking to make Bitcoin uh, the, the capital of Bitcoin, making Miami the capital of Bitcoin. Anything to do with the problems, he's saying that uh, all the issues, they'll work themselves out in time. I tend to think they will as well. In the end, there's only one thing to do, buy the dip. Vitalik Buterin takes swipe at Cardano. So I happen to agree with Vitalik Buterin on this. He's basically saying Ethereum, uh, Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin told podcaster Lex Friedman that deep academic rigor is overrated. 
I, I agree with this. This is what I've been saying about Cardano the entire time. Doing a whole lot of research on top of something before you implement it really slows down the process. I'm not saying that it, it's not possible and it can't be done. I'm just saying I prefer Ethereum's method, which is why I hold more Ethereum than Cardano, uh, to be more heuristic uh, in part because it's trying to do it faster. So by heuristics, Buterin refers to problems solved with practical solutions rather than theoretically spotless formulae. So f have an idea, have a theory, play it out in real life to see how it works rather than have a theory test it in uh, in a setting that isn't real life and then bring it into real life and then test it again in real life because we, we know from experience nothing works out 100% when it actually comes to the crunch. And so I think that is why Ethereum has been so much faster than Cardano in implementing anything. Not to say that Cardano won't work. I definitely think Cardano will work, but it's just going to take a lot longer. So if we can understand that, then we're going to be uh, we're going to be more comfortable with a price movement that would be slower over time. Yes, we've seen big gains in Cardano, but remember Cardano was on a very very long bear market that went to some extreme lows as well. All I'm saying is to understand the approaches so that we can then not be uh, surprised at the price discovery for each of these different cryptocurrencies. Solana has outdone a lot of the top 20 this week, up 48%, or well, we just saw it around 36% since uh, this article is probably a few hours old now. Uh, and this just shows that Solana is still up. We've got another smart contract competitor as well. And I suspect that the platforms on Solana are also going to do quite well. We know that there is Serum. We know that there is Radium. So these things over time will probably do well provided uh, Solana does well. So again, we keep these on the watch list just to make sure that we are, you know, we're staying on the ball. And lastly, did Elon Musk just pump Come Rocket? Elon Musk tweets. Here's the tweet. <laughs> Come Rocket to the moon. Should we go all in on Come Rocket? I don't know. This to me just shows that Elon Musk is just he's just mucking around with stuff. It doesn't really matter long term what goes on. I don't know why people get so triggered about one person's tweets. If you didn't pay attention to it, it's not going to do anything to you. But everyone pays attention to it, so they all get triggered. Speaking of triggered and Twitter, make sure you go and follow me on Twitter. I've got a lot of good posts over here as well. Not just what's your top priority, but a lot of good stuff over here as well on Twitter. So make sure you follow me after this. Follow me on Instagram for daily Q&As. Uh, lastly, like the video up, share it. If you find some value from it, share it over Twitter, share it on your Facebook, whatever it is, share it with your mum and dad. You know what to do until then, have more fun to get more done.